Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. It's uh, about 25 past four, coming towards the end of the day. Uh, this car we've just picked up from BCA Bristol, and I thought I'm going to try and do a quick video on that before the end of the day. It's quite a cool car, I really like these, and I've got it for what I think is an absolute steal, although the mileage isn't low, so let's have a look what we got. It is a 2008 BMW 120D, this is the SE, and of course it's a coupe, which is the E82 of which I am an absolutely huge fan. I love these one series coupes. I think they still look really modern, despite the age. The front end's a little bit of a letdown, but the general body shape of them, the size, the compactness, they just feel really sporty and nimble and cool. Uh, I really like them anyway. And if there's anyone out there who's got a BMW 1M E82, please come, come see me, I will lavish you with wine and things and if i have to i'll cross your palm with gold i would love to drive one of these and uh, in, in a 1m and see what that's like because i think that'd just be a wicked wicked cool car but crazy money these days anyway 1m this is not as i say it's the 120d is also a two liter turbo diesel um and it's the se so not the m sport hasn't got the big alloy wheels isn't lowered but still looks smart i don't think it looks as smart as the m sport ones but it's probably more comfortable to drive, but a better daily car, I imagine. Um, like I say, all the wheels look okay. It's not a huge amount of tread on that tire and it's a little perish, so I think probably gonna need at least one tire. Um, looking along the side, looks okay. Maybe a few little marks on the door here, but considering how old it is, not the end of the world. We've got a little bit of lacquer peel on that bumper corner there. This alloy wheel, also looking pretty good, to be fair. Not a huge amount of tread on that tire either, but it is legal just by about one mil. So yeah, maybe two or three mil on that. So looks like we're probably getting on towards maybe a full set of tires on this, but still we'll get to the price later. Um, yeah, I really like the boot and back end on these and someone's put on a fake carbon duckbill spoiler on there, which you know, I'm not mad at it. I quite like it. I'd prefer if it wasn't carbon effect. It has got a carbon texture to it, but no. Um, yeah, I mean, I like the look. I think it looks quite cool, but uh, maybe not in carbon. Body color would be better. Uh, going around, definitely wants a new set of plates because they're just looking a bit worn out and crappy. Croyland Car Megasaur, shout out to them, whoever they are, if they're still in business, I'm sure they are. A little bit of a scuff here, but the majority of that will uh, polish out and then you could, it feels like it's on the surface. Look, yeah, it's scratching off. How well you able to see that? I don't know. It's a bit of transfer from something there, which is scratching off. So that will almost be unnoticeable because that little chip there, which I can probably put a little bit of uh, paint in, is right on the body line. So I'm not gonna stand out a million miles. It's pretty straight on this side too. We've got a little bit of a ding on the arch there. What's a bit of polishing, in fact, it's, again, not too bad there. There was a mark there, and that is because when I picked this car up, this bumper was pushed out and it was up like that. So we've put it back, clipped it back in. Look at that, jobs are good. Un. This wheel also pretty good, a few little curb marks. Well, there's definitely more tread on that one. That one's got a lot more meat on it. It's more like five mil on that one. But on the whole, tidy, isn't it? Uh, a few stone chips, I'll show you those. This other wheel, same condition, so they're all pretty good. Bizarre, because this one's pretty good as well. That's uh, five or six mil on there. So the tires on this side, good. Tires on that side, not so good. So weird how that's ended up happening but maybe we'll end up putting a couple of tires on or some part warns maybe maybe we'll have something on the shelf to be honest there's the sort of things we'll normally have on the shelf here so uh, a couple of tires on there and that'll be a bit of a matched better matched set i should say uh and the front again still looking pretty good it's actually really not that stone chipped the front number plate is absolutely knackered um few little marks like this 
but you know not bad on the whole is it so let's hop inside and then we'll talk about price which you've probably seen in the title anyway um and mileage so let's hop inside and we can talk about price and mileage price you've probably already seen in the title and maybe the mileage i don't know but let's get inside and talk about it anyway because it's freezing out here this being the e82 has this kind of plastic style of key and we have two of those which is a bonus on a car like this Mmm, some questionable stains there. I seriously hope that's someone's coffee and not a little whittle. Um, quite a dated steering wheel, but otherwise quite cool. Oh, looks like we've got a flip up kind of display unit in there. So let's hop in. All right, yeah. Oh, I did say the steering wheel looks a bit dated actually. Now that I'm sat square with it, it doesn't look too bad. It's pretty standard. BMW M Sport type stuff. Nice and chunky, got good contours. Uh, of course, we've got all our controls on here. That's quite good. We've got our climate control, dual zone by the looks of it. Start, stop button, key goes in the dash there. What have we got in the way of features? Of course, this is a six speed manual. We've likely, if we haven't got navigation, I'll be surprised, uh, but at least we've got a minimum, we've got an MMI system for our media and radio and whatever that's what our little dial down here is for center armrest with our auxiliary in one cup holder there some old fag paper stuff <sighs> reassuring it doesn't smell that bad but then i said that about another car the other day i was like oh it's really good you can see it's been a smoker's car but it doesn't smell of smoke in here but then the longer it sits here the sort of cigarette stale cigarette smoke smell builds a little and i guess it's cleaning chemicals clearing out or the fact that it's been sat with the door shut for maybe you know a good few days versus being opened and whatever so mm, we'll get a we'll get an aircon bomb running through here i think which will and of course we'll change probably do a service as well so we'll change the um oh i want to say aircon filter cabin filter pollen filter because that's kind of what recirculates all the cabin air that filters all that so if you're smoking away in here that's what gets clogged up so if you've got a car that stinks first thing you want to do is change the pollen filter run the air conditioning on recirculation and set off like an air con bomb you probably buy them for about four or five quid from certain places uh, and that kind of just goes through everything and kind of clears it all out oh yeah it pops up our display all right it's telling us we haven't got our sos sos call system quite an old school system that. I don't know how well we're going to see actually but it did tell me let's go to menu right and he's navigation disc I hope that's coming up on the screen there I can't really see if it is or not um we've got oh no sorry I've gone to communication so navigation please insert navigation dvd I don't think we've got one of those usually if we have uh, it's in the paperwork pack I've looked through the paperwork pack it's not in there yeah, it's a fair bit of fag ash and stuff in the back there, so... Oh well. Um, right. I can't seem to get the mileage up without turning it on, so let's fire it up, I'll show you the mileage, and then we'll talk about how much we paid. Right. There we have it. 183,386 miles. You tell me, does it look like a car that's done 183, 84,000 miles? I don't think it does. I think it looks really good. Um, yeah, I think it's carried that, those miles, really well. And so, more importantly, what I paid, I bid, I can't remember what my bid went up to, and I think this may have been my top bid, and I was lucky enough to win it for that, was £800. So I won this car for £800 plus fees, which made it £1,019.40. What is worth doing, of course, is a car vertical check or a HBI check, but we will be using car vertical. Always want to do a car history check when you're buying a car. And we are using car vertical, which seems to do an absolutely incredible job. And they are very thorough, probably the most thorough 
history check of a car I've ever used. If you do want to use them, there'll be a link in the description. And if you use the code SHIFTING, you will get 10% off. Okay, our report is ready. So it says mileage okay, theft okay, accidents okay, and finance okay. So most importantly, we have got our four green ticks. I'm going to scroll through. There's an awful lot of MOT history. Uh, it's had a few decent big fails. Looks like they've all been sorted out though. Come look at our mileage, and it all seems to go very linear. Uh, 30 miles when it was probably first registered, then 63,000 miles, which would be in its first MOT in 2011. 67, 70, 85, 105, and steadily going upwards and always going upwards. There's no dips there, so it doesn't look like this car's likely had a rollback, which you'd be worried about if it had, wouldn't you? Um, it tells us all the country that it's checked. It tells us a market valuation, approximate market valuation of this vehicle, 1,340, when the seller is a company, 2,320. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's going to be a bit more than that. Being that it's a coupe, they really hold their value a lot, a lot better than the hatchbacks, which don't really hold much value. These coupes are super, super desirable. I buy them in a high mileage like this. I've had quite a few high mileage ones, um, always diesels. But if we buy them in low mileage, whether it's coupes or convertibles in the coupe version, um, or which is a coupe body, basically, um, they're gone like that. They always are sold so quickly. I think it's just such a pretty body shape. Right, that done. Let's have a look around the rest of the car and under the bonnet. Let's pop the boot, which we should be able to do from our key. Clonk, there it goes. That'd be nice for some of those strong gas straps on there wouldn't it to make it open automatically this isn't a gun rack as it looks that's probably where our warning triangle should be but our clips are broken as well so i'd be very tempted to just take those off which would look better i think um what have we got in here other than rubbish not a lot we've got a six cd changer that's nice that must have been the uh, optional extra and then under the boot floor can i get it up here's our battery some rubber gloves, some sellotape, and some kind of Stanley slash X-Acto knife in the open and ready position. So this was a serial killer's car. I imagine the serial killer upgraded because it is a decent sized boot, but it wouldn't be great getting bodies in here, access, etc. Anyway, let's pop the bonnet and have a look at the engine in this. Right, here we are. This is definitely one of the grubbier ones. Uh, don't know why we've got like an oil stain on there. Let's pop this oil cap off. Okay, we can see it's been running recently. Some vapors coming out, but it hasn't been driven very far. It's just been pulled around here for me to do a video, so. Nothing should be too hot. Let's check out the coolant. Pretty nice and clean. Tell you what, I'll get the light off my phone and shine that in there for you guys. So you can see what I'm seeing. Nice and clean. No sign of oil slicks or anything in there. So we haven't got to worry on that front. Um, can't say it looks like super shiny clean in here. But got a bit of an oil leak going on here from something breather pipe i expect is that a breather pipe i don't really know but i know that's something that happens on bmws a little plastic pipe there and it seems to be oily that's a fairly common thing i know because i've paid the mechanics to replace quite a few of them so um definitely want to give this you know a good service um you know, well, service inspection really change all the fluids change the filters but we'll also give it a good check over give it a lever bar and all the suspension components things like that and just give it a general health check i suppose but i can't say i've got any concerns from just looking at it so let's take it out on the road and see if uh, it still drives well oh, worth pointing out that again we've got some writing on the windscreen because there's a bca car of course you get it at a lot of auctions but bca specifically so uk cgr trade so uk car group trade just the kind of Basically, we buy any car, trade being their less valuable cars, higher mileage, etc. etc. They do UK CGR select, UK CGR 
premium, UK CGR, low miles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they take everything that they get from We Buy Any Car and lump them into different groups to make different kind of catalogues for the auction. And this was in trade, which is like the snotters that I just shouldn't stock but love. Right, back in the car. Instant observations are well, you can probably hear there's definitely a bit of suspension noise going on the back. It's actually pretty drastic. Not that I think it's anything necessarily bad, but it's pretty audible. I'm not 100% sure on what that is. Normally I can tell pretty well by the sound. Maybe, I think the shocks could be blown on the back. Fuel range is on one mile, so I probably shouldn't get too carried away with this test drive. We have got an amber warning light, which is the exclamation mark inside what is essentially the brake symbol, a circle with brackets around it. So I imagine we've probably got a brake wear sensor going on this, which might want some pads as well. Can't say I've actually checked the disc's condition. Uh, we'll check that when we get back. It does smell quite acrid and diesel-y, almost a bit like it's a bit uh, caked up and whatever and perhaps got a bit of carbon in the exhaust and probably wants a good fuel treatment put through it and a real good Italian tune-up. I will of course speak to Steph tomorrow and see what he thinks about that but it's not actually smoking so far as I can tell. The wipers are quite squeaky. But other than that it seems great. It seems to pull really well. The gearbox seems still really tight, nice and notchy. Probably one of the better BMW gear, manual gearboxes I've used anyway. I'm just gonna pull over and check the boot because I wouldn't be surprised, thinking back to looking in the boot, to me it sounds a bit like the boot floor's bouncing up and down or if you had a spare wheel, the spare wheel isn't clipped in properly. Obviously we haven't got a spare wheel, but the battery wasn't there. I wonder if the battery was actually bolted down or if that's just bouncing around the boot floor. Because handling doesn't really seem like it's screaming completely blown shock. So I'm gonna have a quick check and back in a sec. Literally as I'm about to get out, uh, we have this warning come up particle filter so our dpf is probably blocked or maybe a sensor is blocked because normally if it's blocked i wonder how it would drive now i was going to say another warning sign when i got in this car that made me a little bit you know dubious about what might crop up is the fact that the obd port cover is missing as if it's been off a lot or has been plugged in recently and they've lost it. Um, I wonder how it will be affected now. Probably the particle uh, DPF probably won't like the fact this is quite low on fuel as well. I'm gonna check the boot first, then let's take it back out again and see if uh, we've, we've gone to limp mode or not. Right, battery is well and truly secured in that boot, so that's definitely not what our noise is. You can almost hear a bit of a knocking when you come to a sharp stop as well, which again could be the shocks. They tend to, if they blow badly, they blow out completely. All the oil's gone, so there's no necessarily obvious signs and they get a lot of movement that you might sort of look at it and it doesn't really play that much up and down, but it plays side to side or vice versa. So not always that obvious, but blown shock absorbers do account for a lot of suspension noises that we deal with at least anyway. So, I did notice when we went through these lanes before that although it seemed to be running quite clean despite the smell, when you got up into the higher range you did get a bit of black smoke, so as you probably expect wouldn't you with a block, block DPF or a caked up DPF. So let's go and put our foot down when we get to the national speed limit see what she's telling us. Tell you what, you can definitely tell the handling difference between this in a SE spec versus M Sport. This definitely feels a bit more wallowy and not quite as sharp as the M Sport versions of these coupes, so I'm not always an M Sport advocate, but in the case of these E82s, I think 
probably the one to have. Right, national speed limit. Well, still got plenty of smoke. Poke is what I meant to say. It's still got plenty of poke. I looked in the rear view mirror and saw smoke, so I said still got plenty of smoke. Well, it's still got plenty of poke, so I can't say I believe the DPF is completely blocked. It might well have a bit of blockage, it might be caked up, the sensors might be caked up, but it's not block blocked. Like I've seen some of them blocked, you know, where we put a treatment through and water literally won't go through the exhaust system because they are that blocked. This certainly can't be that bad because it just wouldn't perform this well. It wouldn't pick up this well. In fact, it feels like it's the more I'm putting my foot down and getting it up in those higher revs, the more it's almost freeing up a little bit. Yeah, no real performance issues, despite there being a brake warning light on, the brakes feel pretty good. All sorts of things went flying then. Normally, this is where in the video I'd kind of do a bit of a summary of what I think of the car and what I'm planning to do with it. Uh, and nine times out of ten, it's a bit of a, I'll give it a clean, we'll give it a service and it'll go out. There's not much point in filming that. But we are going to need to try and find a couple of tyres for this. We're going to need to plug it in, find out exactly what it's saying about this particulate filter, uh, why it's moaning about its brakes, see whether it needs uh, dis dis and pads, whether it just needs a wear sensor or a wear sensor wire is being broken or something, and find out what all that knocking noise is in the back. And then we may as well give it a clean up as well, valet these seats that look like unthinkable things have happened. And then we'll wrap up the video with an explanation of exactly how much I've spent and yeah, what my plans are. I feel like this should still have been a steal because I reckon about £3,000 for this car to sell it would be fair, but also it is going to need an MOT as well, isn't it? Because it hasn't got as long of an MOT as I thought. So join me tomorrow. Welcome back. Car is in the valeting bay. We've got the crack team on it. Rare Mass is doing shocks. Shockingly, I was correct and it was the shocks. Jordan is going to have to lick these seats clean in a minute, aren't you? Yeah, I'm hungry. Hungry, yeah. Hungry. You won't be after that. Uh, on top of that, we figured out that the discs and pads were okay, but there was a couple of wires broken for the sensors. So we've got a couple of sensors, they're only like eight and nine quid. Um, we're going to do that. And we want three tyres, which I don't know if they've arrived yet. That's irritating. Um, we're going to get those fitted. Oh, DPF. Uh, we think it's okay, we just need to give it a good run, clear out, as it seems to be getting better as we we're driving it. Put some fuel in, uh, put some treatment in, and fingers crossed that will be an improvement. Let's get to it. Should we do one each and see who's his best? Who's better at sucking off? Who's better at, yeah, siphoning farts out of seat? I'll make it fair, I'll do the driver's seat, which is definitely worse. Okay. As it would be. Well, here we are then. All the work done on the One Series Coupe. Uh, it's looking better, it's safer. There are a couple of things I guess we need to do to finish up, which would be the MOT. But let me show you how it's looking so far and then we'll hop in the office and talk about numbers. Here we are. And it's looking a bit nicer. Uh, it's had a clean now. 
which had three tyres on it. I think it still probably only did need two really, but someone said three and we ended up ordering three. So three it is. Um, it never looked that bad on the outside in the first place, to be honest. But you might notice that we've put some nice new Barrow Motors plates on there now. Really lifts a car when you've got rubbish plates on there. How bad it makes a car look. There was, you might remember, there was a bit of a scuff on here. And it was kind of, there's still a little bit over there. Anyway, like lots of scuff marks around there. So I polished that out and there's just that little chip there. I'm probably not even going to bother trying to find any kind of even close paint to... Uh, to dab in there. Um, what else can I say on the outside? Not a huge amount really. Let's have a look at the seats. So if you remember those interior seats were pretty gross. They're still not perfect now, but a lot better than they were, I think. It smells a lot nicer in here. It's had a quick little clean round, so yeah, that's an improvement. We had two new shocks on the back. That's what was causing all that rattling noise. Um, it's pretty common on these, apparently. I didn't know, but that is what I guessed it would be. Um, so they've been changed. They weren't too expensive, actually. Um, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, so that's got rid of all that noise. And the particulate filter, I think it was... So the, it came up on the screen, but it still drove really well. And in fact, the more I put my foot down, the better it went. Uh, they've plugged it in, they've checked the levels, etc. Uh, I think basically it needs to do its own actual regen on the road. They probably could have done a forced regen, where they, it sits there and revs its nuts off but I think I'm going to put an additive in and actually give it some driving to get it up to temperature. Um, if we need to go up to anywhere in Bristol, Porsche, whatever, whatever, to get any parts, I'll send someone up in this and it'll get a good motorway run. And I think it's going to be all right, to be honest. Um, it's one of those things, isn't it, with diesel engines, they do not like doing short journeys only. So yeah, let's hop in the office and we'll talk figures. Right then, let's get into it. So figures. We bought the car for £1,019.40. Oh, Got the three tyres. Uh, there's my little notepad of all my things on here. Tyres we managed to get for £34.80 each, plus VAT. I'm not going to put the VAT in any of these prices here. Again, if you're figuring it out for yourself, you would have to add VAT in. Of course, that's going to come off your profits. As a business, I can claim the VAT back and I don't have to charge it out because this is a used vehicle, but then I pay VAT on the whole car or on the, on the whole markup that I make on the car. So the difference between £1,019.40 and whatever I sell it for, let's say it's £3,000, that difference, I'm going to pay roughly, it's about 16.5% or whatever it is. I don't know, the accountant must know. 16.75% of that I'm going to pay in VAT, regardless of how much I spend on fixing the car because you claim you have VAT back on the parts that you use on fixing the car, ideally. Uh, regardless, whatever the difference is from what I've bought it and what I've sold it, never mind what I'm doing in the middle, I'm going to pay 16.5% on that. So I'm going to get into all the details, all the accounting and how it actually goes as a car trader. I'm just going to tell you what it cost me, minus the VAT, because that's how I think about it when I'm buying stuff. So tyres were £34.80 each plus VAT, but for three of those, it has cost me, pen's not going to work now, £104.40. And, and of course, we need the two rear shocks. We got those for, um, where are they? £35.98 each. Really cheap, actually. I was really impressed with that. I thought I might have to get them on eBay to keep it cheaper. But the uh, motor factors came through with some fairly decent prices there. So for the pair of those, £71.96. I doubt you're going to be able to see that on there, are you? Because my whiteboard pen's running out. I'll go and buy some more today. Then we had to get a top mount. Nothing wrong with our top mount. We just lost a part. In fact, I'll let Jordan explain to you why. So 12 pounds for a top mount, Jordan. Why have we got that? Someone dropped it in the wheel well, or supposedly in the wheel well. I thought it bounced under the car, but it's not on the floor. Who did it? Because I don't actually know which one of you it was. No, it wasn't me. So Dan came in and warned them, don't lose that washer. And then, um, what's it? I'm not taking it. So them. an extra, extra 12 pounds on the bill. Out, take a food out of my mouth. I'm trying to and plus, live it's on. Right, it's right. hours wasted now. Yeah, hours of labour. I'm sure twelve pound could come off your food bill. Is that meant to be a derogatory <laughs> term about <laughs> pregnancy joke? Yeah. Taking food out of my baby, my food baby's mouth. Then we had two wear sensors on the front. Both the wires had been broken, basically. We possibly could have 
um, perhaps join them back together, but for the sake of front left and front right sensors cost me £17.68 for the pair. So, not great shakes. I'm going to get another pen. Then service, which we haven't done yet, but we will do. Um, for oil filter, air filter, pollen filter, and for, I think it was 5.2 litres of 5W30. Um, that comes to 49 pounds and 34 pence. Steph, while he was checking it over for me, uh, looking into the DPF issues, spotted that it definitely wants an auxiliary belt because that is looking pretty perished. Again, we'll do that when we do the service, but that, 21.47. Then I'm going to put £10 down for a valet because that includes the new plates that we put on and an air freshener. just covers not the labour, but the bits and pieces and chemicals involved. Um, we're going to put a Forte treatment for the system fuel system in there. They cost us nine quid. And then we are going to have to eventually put an MOT on this for 45 quid. So that should be everything, bringing us a grand total of £1,360.25. pence. I think that is a bargain car. Now, I had it in my head that I was going to sell this for about £3,000. I'm just having a quick look through Auto Trader. We've got one here, 3695, but that's 105,000 miles. And it's an SE, but it's all a bit pimped. It's black, all the bits and pieces on it. Obviously, less miles. Then there's one for 2499, which looks like a private sale in Watford on 121,000. Fairly similar spec to ours. Uh, 3794 and 118,000, but that's an M Sport. Then we got 4,000 with an M aerodynamic body styling, that's 164,000, but that's an M Sport and it's an auto. And 3795, again M Sport auto, and 4750 M Sport auto. So, don't get me wrong, I am going to put this up for 3,000 or 2995 because I think there's a fair chance there's not a huge amount of these one series coupes out and they are super desirable. So, Gonna try my luck, see if I can't get it. But let's say we sell it for two and a half more realistically. Believe you me, I will not be selling it for less. Um, we are looking at 1,300, sorry, that's not right. 1,139 pounds and 75 pence gross profit. So not bad at all, well worth doing less than a day's work. If you were doing that on your own, you could definitely have done all that in a day if you had the equipment, etc. So yeah, not a bad little result. I really like these cars. I'm going to put one of those treatments in it, put some fuel on it. I suppose you could add 20 quid of fuel on there as well, but give it a good run, get it warmed up and yeah, get this sold on to someone else to enjoy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the breakdown. hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please subscribe. If you're not, thank you for continuing to watch and I will see you next time.